of archaeologists have just stumbled upon a great discovery, evidence of a society that existed long before ours, right here in the caves of endometriosis. Let's take a look and see what our four mothers had to teach us. Endometriosis, symbolized by these patches of red paint, is the disease when endometrial glands and stroma implant outside of the uterus. This can be a debilitating, chronic condition. Endometrial implants can technically be found anywhere in the body. The most common place this tissue implants are the structures around the uterus, such as the fallopian tubes, ovaries, bladder, and rectum. However, implants can and have been found even on distant structures, such as the diaphragm. The endometrial implants are responsive to estrogen, just like normal endometrial tissue. And also just like normal endometrial tissue, these implants will grow and shed, which causes a state of chronic inflammation around their sites of implantation. Often, this inflammation also causes the formation of adhesions. To remind you of this relationship between estrogen and endometriosis, the patches of red paint have been painted on with this estrogrow pigment. Endometriosis is most often diagnosed during a patient's reproductive years after menarche and before menopause, when she's actively producing higher levels of estrogen. I guess that's why there's this painting of a reproductive-aged woman right here on the cave wall. The hallmark symptoms of endometriosis are cyclic pelvic pain and infertility, which will be symbolized over on the painting on the right wall, depicting a boar attack. The pelvic pain associated with endometriosis, symbolized by this boar goring this person in the lower abdomen, is usually related to the patient's menstrual cycle, often getting worse right before the patient's period is about to start. The patient may also note that she has particularly heavy bleeding during her periods, represented by our recurring symbol for this, a red moon. However, unlike other menstrual irregularities, endometriosis doesn't typically cause intermenstrual bleeding. As we mentioned earlier, endometrial implants can be found anywhere. So if there are implants on the bladder, this may cause dysuria, symbolized by this man peeing on the fire. He's trying to put it out so that he and his companions can flee the boars. If the endometrial implants are on the rectum, the patient may complain of dyskesia. We've symbolized dyskesia with this boar taking a painful poop in the middle of its attack. Other common types of pain noted are dyspareunia, symbolized with these petunias, and a low backache symbolized by this guy holding his lower back. Another sign that should make your endometriosis radar perk up is if a patient has been having a difficult time conceiving. The strict diagnosis of infertility, symbolized by these shriveled fruits, depends on your patient's age. If your patient is under 35 years old and has been having unprotected sex for 12 months without conceiving, they meet the criteria for infertility. If your patient is 35 years old or older, then this time frame is shortened to six months. In terms of risk factors, a first-degree relative with endometriosis, such as this mom and sister in the family portrait cave painting on the left, is associated with a higher risk of having endometriosis. The piece de resistance in this cave is the giant uterus painting these archaeologists found. The giant uterus is flanked by two handprints to remind you that on a bimanual exam, you may notice the following findings. These patients usually experience bilateral adnexal tenderness. You may also feel an adnexal mass while performing your exam, which could be an endometrioma. An endometrioma is a cyst filled with old endometrial tissue. It's also referred to as a chocolate cyst due to the brown-colored blood found within its center. We've symbolized this type of cyst with a brown rock protruding out of the adnexal region of the giant uterus. Other findings may include limited mobility of the uterus due to adhesions, as well as nodularity found along the uterosacral ligaments, symbolized with these small rocks along the bottom of the uterus painting. Now, onto studies. Endometriosis can't be diagnosed via imaging. But oftentimes, physical exam findings will lead to obtaining a transvaginal ultrasound, represented with this ultrasound horn. On TVUS, you may see evidence of an endometrioma. 
which is why the bullhorn is pointing over to that brown rock. These show up as hypoechoic unilocular masses. Although you can have a very high suspicion for endometriosis via your clinical findings alone, and many providers will start treatment based on these findings, the only way to definitively diagnose endometriosis is via laparoscopic surgery to visualize whether or not there are endometrial implants, and if there are, to biopsy them for tissue confirmation. We have symbolized laparoscopy with this torch that the archaeologist is holding up in order to illuminate the uterus. On laparoscopy, endometrial implants can be many colors, white, red, brown, even black. The darker ones are sometimes referred to as powder burn lesions, represented by the spots where the torch has burned the cave wall. When considering treatment for endometriosis, you should keep in mind the degree of symptoms and whether or not your patient desires current or future fertility. In general, you should start off with medical treatment, which is considered more conservative, and then escalate to surgical treatment if symptoms persist. The one caveat to this is that if your patient desires fertility, you should bypass medical treatment, especially because, as you'll soon see, medical treatment consists of birth control, and proceed directly to surgical treatment. We'll remind you to do this with this pregnant archaeologist who's cutting out one of the red patches of pain. The first-line treatment for pain associated with endometriosis is an NSAID. Our recurring symbol for NSAIDs is a fire extinguisher. In this sketch, it's a stone bucket full of water, aka a caveman fire extinguisher. Concurrently, if the patient does not desire current fertility, combined oral contraceptives can be used to try to regulate estrogen production, since it's believed that endometriosis lesions are in part driven to grow by estrogen. The overall goal with any hormonal treatment for endometriosis is to prevent the endometrial implants from growing, which causes more inflammation and scarring. We represented combined oral contraceptives with this palette of prehistoric pigment that the archaeologists found that looks a lot like a birth control pill pack. Another option, especially if estrogen-containing treatments are contraindicated in your patient, are progestin-only medications. These medications thin out endometrial tissue and come in many different forms, such as an injectable or daily pill. We'll remind you of these with our recurring symbol for progesterone, the protective dome. GnRH agonists, represented by this gardener's hardware tote bag, suppress gonadotropin secretion and are another class of drugs used to treat endometriosis. However, these can't be used long-term due to the side effects caused by prolonged estrogen deficiency, such as decreased bone density and decreased cardiovascular health. You're essentially putting a patient into menopause with this class of drugs, which you don't want to do if you don't have to. In terms of surgical treatments, there are two types. Laparoscopic removal of the lesions, represented by this long chisel the archaeologist is using to remove a patch of paint, or a complete hysterectomy, with or without a bilateral salpingo oophorectomy, represented by this other archaeologist who's chiseling the giant uterus painting out of the wall. Before all of these prehistoric artifacts get packed up and shipped out to a museum, Let's do a super quick review so we don't forget them. Endometriosis is a disease where endometrial tissue implants in places it's not supposed to be. Typical symptoms include cyclic pelvic pain, heavy bleeding associated with periods, dyspareunia, and low back pain. If the implants are on the bowel or bladder, they can cause dyskesia and dysuria as well. Another way a patient may present is with a history of inability to conceive. The physical exam may be notable for bilateral adnexal tenderness and uterosacral ligament nodularity. You may also feel evidence of an endometrioma, aka a chocolate cyst. The only way to definitively diagnose endometriosis is by visualizing the endometrial lesions via laparoscopy. These lesions can be a number of colors, but the classic term used has been powder burn lesions, which denotes a dark, almost black color. For pain, the first-line medication used are NSAIDs. Combined oral contraceptives, progestins, and GnRH agonists are all used to regulate hormone levels in the hopes of shrinking the implants. 
But if your patient desires fertility or has failed medication management, proceed to surgical treatment. The most common treatment is laparoscopic removal or ablation of the lesions, but in refractory cases, it may be necessary to proceed to hysterectomy. Okay, looks like our archaeological team is packing up, so we better get out of here too. See you next time.